damn humid! Last year, I helped a new viewer that was having problems with his hunting load. He did proper load development going through all the steps I outlined in my reloading video. And he just actually discovered a great load that shot fantastic. But when he made a new batch of that ammo months later, using the same exact recipe, with the same exact components, with the same exact lot numbers, the velocity of his new batch of ammo was 100 feet per second faster, and he couldn't figure out why. And his groups were just all over the place. So I found out from him that he developed his load in Arizona last February and made a new batch in July. And that new batch was the one that was uh, chronoing 100 feet per second faster, and the groups went to shit on him. So I recommended that he monitor the humidity and temperature in his reloading room and he reported back to me that the relative humidity got down to 18% where he was storing his powder. The extreme humidity differences in his stored powder caused that 100 feet per second velocity increase in his favorite load, in my opinion. Yep, humidity can actually do that. Last week, another one of my subscribers emailed me inquiring about the effects of humidity on loaded ammunition. And since it seems to be a pretty popular topic, I decided to do a video about it to give you my own opinion on the effects of uh, humidity on ammunition. I'd say that most commercial ammunition, like the stuff you buy at the store, is actually not as waterproof as you think it is. There's been several tests over the years, and it seems like some ammunition could sit underwater for weeks and still fire. And some ammo fails after about an hour or so of being submerged. So don't store your ammunition underwater. Now, the effects of humidity on powder is a different problem entirely. And it's common knowledge that humidity does affect stored powder. Lots of testing has been done on uh, humidity's effect on stored powder, but not only a limited amount of testing has been done on humidity's effect on loaded ammunition, and that's still a hotly debated subject. I watched a video last summer called uh, Humidity's Effect on Loaded Ammo uh, by the YouTube channel Winning in the Wind, and he found no statistical changes resulting from humidity on his loaded ammunition. You know, and that's after a month of exposure to different humidity levels. Another guy on YouTube tried a similar but much less scientific test and found big variations in loaded ammo with changes in humidity. So these amateur tests not done in laboratory conditions and with statistically low sample sizes are just all over the place. Norma also tested loaded ammunition and they published the results on that. And their findings were that humidity does affect loaded ammunition, but it takes a really long time to happen, often months. So I'm going to resort to some conjecture that pulls from my personal experiences on this. When I load batches of ammo and shoot them in a reasonable amount of time, I really don't see velocity swings in environments with different humidity levels, to tell you the truth. So I don't see humidity affecting my loaded ammunition that much, just like winning in the wind found. But I have seen big velocity swings when I load my ammo or I store my powder in drastically different humidity levels. You know, I have a reloading bench in my garage, which is the same environmental conditions as outside. And I have a reloading bench inside, like the one you see behind me, which is in a temperature-controlled, stable environment. And I've seen huge variations in that. So let's discuss problems with humidity and powder. Most of us load our powder by weight. And increased moisture content in the powder can cause the powder to weigh heavier than it would if it was stored in a dry environment. So when you weigh powder that's been stored in a really humid place, 
you're loading less actual powder by volume than using powder that was stored at a dry place. The result, your loads weighed in a really humid environment will be slower by velocity because there's less powder by volume. On the other end of that, loads weighed in a really dry environment will have more powder by volume and give you higher velocities because of the increased powder charge. So humidity changes the weight of the powder itself and the drier the powder is, the more powder you'll be putting on the scale by volume. Also, and this is important, moisture changes the surface area of the powder grains, which changes the burn rate of the powder. As a result, really dry powder will have a faster burn rate than moist powder will. Humidity actually has a big effect on the burn rate of powders. Basically, if you developed a load at 75% humidity, but later make a batch of ammo that's been stored at 15% humidity, you could end up with a very dangerous overpressure load. Powder manufacturers recommend that you store your powder in an environment of about 50% relative humidity. Doing load development and storing powder at this neutral humidity number will ensure less variation in powder characteristics when conditions out in the field aren't perfect. Also be mindful that single base powders that are touted for superior temperature stability have worse humidity stability than double base powders. The nitroglycerin content of a double base powder actually helps fight the effects of humidity on the powder a little bit. So the powders we love like H4350 and Varget need to be stored in a humidity controlled environment. When I found out about humidity and powder, I stopped loading ammo in my garage and I also added a humidifier to my reloading room where I store my powder. In a modern home with you know central heating and air conditioning, you do have some control over humidity, but heating and air conditioning tend to make the air drier. So a humidifier is actually a good idea in my opinion. I now store all of my powder and reloading supplies, as well as my loaded ammunition in a humidity stable room. I also only load ammunition in smaller batches that I plan on using in a you know reasonable amount of time so it doesn't sit in storage for too long. Also, be careful not to confuse the effects of humidity on powder with the effects of temperature on powder. Powder manufacturers can engineer temperature stability into a powder, especially the single base powders, but they can't make any powder humidity proof. In fact, the really temperature stable powders that we like using a lot for accuracy and uh, temperature stability are actually affected by humidity more. And lastly, remember that relative humidity is relative to temperature. And perhaps monitoring dew point is a better endeavor for people in places with big temperature extremes. Ammo and powder manufacturers will tell you to store their products in a cool, dry place. We've all read that on the MSDS sheets, store in a cool, dry place. Obviously, higher temperatures degrade powder over time, so we get that. But what do they mean by a dry place? Well, I contacted Hodgdon and asked them what they meant by a dry place. And they told me that a dry place means an area that won't get wet or damp. So they don't mean a place with really dry air when they say to store it in a dry place. Just not to store your powder or ammunition in a place that might get wet or damp. Powder and ammo manufacturers try to keep humidity levels at about 50 to 55% at their factories because those humidity levels are comfortable for people to work in and they prevent static electricity discharges. I'd imagine that static electricity is a really bad thing in a powder factory. Hodgdon tells you to store their powder at 70 degrees Fahrenheit with 50% relative humidity. Uh, Vitaviri says to store their powders 
at 68 degrees Fahrenheit with 55% relative humidity. Both of those recommendations have a dew point just over 50 degrees. And that 50 degree dew point seems to be a sweet spot for powder storage and for comfort in your home. So that's what I would aim for. So it seems like a moderate amount of humidity or being in a kind of a humidity neutral environment is a good thing for powder. The burn rates and mass per grain standards for each powder are set at a specific humidity level, usually about 1% moisture. So if you want your powder to perform as advertised, it's probably a good thing to store it at those factory humidity levels. At least that's my logic. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and check out my other videos. My channel is a very diverse outdoor experience and it pretty much has something for everyone. Thanks for watching and as always, good hunting.